Just as there is light that we can't see because it's beyond the red, there's another kind of light that we can't see for quite the opposite reason. It's beyond the violet. You know what we call it? Very good, we call it ultraviolet. So we have infrared light that you can't see, and we have ultraviolet light that you can't see. And I have here an ultraviolet light. And I'm going to now plug it in, and we'll turn off the room lights again. Now you see it glowing a violet color, and the thing that you see is not ultraviolet. What you're seeing is visible light, uh, violet light, but there is also light that you don't see, the ultraviolet. And you see an interesting thing. I have here some pieces of chalk, and over here there's some rocks of various sorts. And you notice when the ultraviolet light strikes these various pieces of chalk, that they glow. And this is a process that we call fluorescence. And you notice many things exhibit fluorescence. In fact, even my shirt fluoresces. When ultraviolet light strikes many objects, they glow and they give off a light that you are able to see. And so uh, this process of fluorescence is uh, rather common in nature. There are many things that do this. But I want to talk for a minute about another closely related idea, and that's something called phosphorescence. Now, a phosphorescent material is much like a fluorescent material in that when light shines on it, it glows, except unlike a fluorescent material like the chalk, when the source of light, in this case ultraviolet, is removed, the glow doesn't stop instantly, but it continues glowing, sometimes for many hours. And the most familiar example of a phosphor is the numbers on the dial of, of your watch. If you have one of the old kind of analog watches that has uh, numbers on it, you may have noticed if, you, if you're out in the bright sunlight or in a brightly illuminated room like, th like this, and then you go into a dark room, it will continue glowing, sometimes all night. So you can read your watch at night because of this property of phosphorescence. Now, I want to show you an unusual example of a phosphor. And for this, I need a volunteer. Who would help? Let's see. Lots of volunteers. How about you? <clears throat> Come down here. Turn around. Tell us your name. Yeah. Sam? Yeah. Sam, do you like science? Mm -hmm. One of your best subjects, I hope? <laughs> well, you study hard, Sam. Maybe you can be a scientist when you're a little older. Now, Sam, what I'd like you to do is turn to your right, go over to my assistant, Mr. Thomas. Now, he will show you a metal plate that is colored red, and what he's going to ask you to do is just to jump up and hit that. Jump up nice and high. Hey, there you go. Good shot. Now, we'd like you to do that once more, except this time we're going to make you do it in the dark. Do you think you can do that? OK. So we're going to turn off all the lights. <clears throat> and we have to get our phosphorescent screen ready. So this will take just a moment. And now, Sam, we're going to ask you one more time to jump up nice and high and give that plate a slap. Thank you, Sam. Take a souvenir for your trouble. Now, you notice that we made, we actually took a photograph of Sam. And that little metal plate was actually connected to a switch that was connected in turn to a flash bulb, just like on your camera. And uh, when he hit that switch, the flash bulb went off, and that exposed the phosphor sheet that we have here, except, of course, in the place where he was standing or actually jumping, we caught him in midair, at where it made a shadow. The phosphor was not exposed, and you noticed it continued to glow. And it will do so for 15 or 20 seconds, and you, you could see it slowly fading. And you've probably seen those in museums uh, but perhaps uh, no one ever explained to you how it worked. 